Good morning. He is risen. And throughout the centuries, the response has been, He is risen indeed. And so if you responded that way already, you're in the spirit. And uh, for today is Easter Sunday. And for the next five Sundays, the churches around the world will be celebrating Easter. Because this is the church calendar where it starts today, Easter Sunday, and we continue to celebrate it for the next five Sundays. And then we go into Ascension Sunday and we start looking at the Ascension of Christ. But hey, what a glorious morning it is to be able to worship a risen Savior, for He is alive. He is risen indeed. And so this morning I just want to have a prayer with you, and I'm going to read the, the, read the account. It's the most beautiful account that I'm going to read to you. Actually, it's from the life of Jesus, it's called. And so I'm going to read the life of, from the life of Jesus Bible, uh, the resurrection of Jesus. Now, I'll just remind you, the life of Jesus Bible takes the four Gospels and puts it into one account. And they try not to leave anything out. They try not to repeat anything. So here is... Here is from the life of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. The next day, after the Sabbath day, suddenly an angel of the Lord came from the sky, and there was a huge earthquake. The angel went to the tomb and rolled the stone away from the entrance. Then he sat on top of the stone. The angel was shining as bright as lightning. His clothes were as white as snow. The soldiers guarding the tomb were very afraid of the angel. They shook with fear and then became like dead men. Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary the mother of James bought some sweet-smelling spices to put on Jesus' body. Very early on that day, the first day of the week, the women were going to the tomb. It was very early, after sunrise. The women said to each other, There is a large stone covering the entrance of the tomb. Who will move the stone for us? Then the women looked and saw that the stone was moved. The stone was very large. But it was moved away from the entrance. They went in. But they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't understand this. While they were wondering about it, two men in shining clothes stood before them. The women were very afraid. They bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said, don't be afraid. You're looking for Jesus from Nazareth, the one who was killed on a cross. The men said to them, Why are you looking for a living person here? This is a place for dead people. He has risen from death. He is not here. Look, here is the place where they put him when he was dead. Jesus is not here. He has risen from death. Do you remember what he said in Galilee? He said the Son of Man must be handed over to the control of sinful men, be killed on a cross, and rise from death on the next day. Now go and tell his disciples and be sure to tell Peter. That Jesus is going into Galilee and will be there before you come. You will see him there as he told you before. Then the women remembered what Jesus had said. So the women left the tomb quickly. They were afraid, but they were also very happy. And they ran to tell his followers what happened. These women were Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and some other women. They told the apostles everything that happened. But the apostles didn't believe what they said. It sounded like nonsense. 
But Peter and the other followers started going to the tomb. They were both running. In other words, they believed a little bit. <laughs> and they were running. But the other follower ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in. He saw the pieces of linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter finally reached the tomb, he went in immediately and saw the pieces of linen lying there. He also saw the cloth that had been around Jesus' head. It was folded up and laid in a different place from the pieces of linen. Then the other follower went in, the one who had reached the tomb first. He saw what had happened and believed. These followers did not yet understand the scriptures that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the followers went back home. Now, it's really interesting to try and consider it, the actual events and what took place here. I believe that after the crucifixion of Jesus, that some of the apostles went back to the upper room. And some of the other apostles went back to, to, to Bethany. So what we're reading here is the account of all those who are in Bethany who go to see the tomb, who go to Golgotha. And so what happened with those who went to the upper room? A lot of them went to the upper room because they just felt more comfortable there. Uh, all, none of them lived in the area. Um, Mary, Mary Magdalene is, is really Mary of Magdala. She was from the town of Magdala. Uh, all of the, most of the apostles were from, from Gal, of the region of Galilee. Uh, most specifically, you have uh, Peter would have been from Capernaum. And so, all, and so they really didn't have any place to stay around Jerusalem, so they had to find some place to stay. So now, what happened to all those who were in the upper room? The first account of those who came from, from Bethany. Now listen to this. Jesus rose from death early on the first day of the week. That's today. He first appeared to Mary Magdalene. One time in the past, Jesus had focused... Jesus had forced seven demons out of Mary from Magdala. But Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And while she was crying, she bent down and looked inside the tomb. She saw two angels dressed in white sitting where Jesus' body had been. One was sitting where the head had been. The other was sitting where the feet had been. The angels asked Mary, Woman, why are you crying? And Mary answered, They took away the body of my Lord, and I don't know where they've put him. When Mary said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought that this man was the one who takes care of the garden. So she said to him, Did you take away take, did you take him away, sir? Tell me where you've put him. I will go and get him. Takes a while to change the pages here, just a minute. <laughs> Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him. And said in Aramaic, Rabboni. This means teacher. And Jesus said to her, You don't need to hold on to me. I have not yet gone back to the Father, but go to my followers and tell them this. I'm going back to my Father and your Father. I'm going back to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the followers and told them, I saw the Lord. And she told them what he had said to her. But Mary told them that Jesus was alive. She said that she had seen Jesus. But they didn't believe her yet. You know, it's really hard to believe the amazing good news. That 
Jesus is alive and that he rose from the grave. I just love the fact that the, the, when, when Mary and, and the other women went to anoint the body of Jesus, that they continued to ask the question. They were very concerned. Who's going to roll the stone away? Because it was a massive stone to roll away. But the, but the amazing thing is that when they got there, the stone was rolled away already. The, the angel of the Lord had rolled the stone away. And my question to you is this. Why did they roll the stone away? Was it to let Jesus out? That's what most people think. That's what, that's what we kind of learn in, 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 in our, our childhood teaching, that the stone was rolled away so Jesus could get let out. But the truth is, Jesus could walk right through that stone. It didn't make any difference to Jesus. The stone was rolled away so that we could come in. And that's the good news of Easter, that the stone has been rolled away. And as a result of the stone being rolled away, we have the freedom to come into the presence of Jesus. We have the presence to come into the presence of God. And we have the freedom to be able to witness the resurrection of the life and the forgiveness of our sins and life everlasting. This is the meaning of Easter. That God rolls away the stones that blind us, that keep us from experiencing the wholeness of his goodness. And so he is risen. He is risen indeed. The stone has been rolled away. And it is a beautiful Easter morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this glorious morning. This glorious time where we can raise, we can, we can worship a risen Savior. And so we love you, Lord. And we praise your name. Always and forever. Hallelujah. Amen.